Welcome to our Shir, Parshas Veschanon, Shabbos Nachamu, Tavshin Pei Aleph. And we've gone through the time of Tisha B'av, and now we're moving forward into Shabbos Nachamu and on our journey to El. And it's interesting, we look at the Parsha, we take a look and we see that Moshe Rabbeinu begins the Parsha with a crushing disappointment. And he says, Veschanon Hashem B'Isi Lamar. I, I beseeched Hashem at that time, saying, and he tells us that he asked Hashem, You've already started showing me Eretz Yisrael. You're the great rebunch. You can do everything, right? Everyone, no. Let me just ask you a little favor. I'd like to go. As Eretz Ataiba. And then Hashem Be'er Yard in this beautiful land that you promised us. And Hashem says, Nain, Be'isabra Hashem Bilamanchem. Hashem refused, Voshom Eli didn't listen to, my, to what I said. And even worse, He said, You can't go, but your Talmud Yeshua, He is going to go. And this was obviously, Moshe Rabbeinu says, He damned 515 times. And I was thinking, How many times do we damn collectively in Klau Yisrael over the Dairis? And say, Esemu David Avdecha, Dushlaim Ircha Brachim Toshuv, Hashiva Shavtain Kavishaina. We ask for, we ask Mamish for Mashiach, we ask for three times a day, times millions and millions and millions of Jews. How many, how many times is that? It must be trillions. And Maishur Benut says, was connected all of Kal Yisrael. Maishur Benut says, the Medrash says that that they, the women in Mitzrayim gave birth to six at one time, V'yesh Armim, 600,000. And the Chazan, 600,000? And the answer is yes. Yocheved gave birth to Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was like 600,000. So Moshe Rabbeinu is connected to Yisrael. So when he died, was 515 times, multiply that times 600,000. It's an awful lot. And nevertheless, Hashem said no. How did Moshe Rabbeinu react? What am I sure you to do after this rejection? So I'd like to share with you a brilliant article that I saw by Rav Aryazev Ginsburg Shlita, who, uh, who writes very passionately about this Indian. And he talks, it's an article, last week's Mishpacha magazine, and he writes, just, it's an amazing, he's a, he's a tremendous Bal Machshav, we've had him speak many times at the conventions. And he writes about something that happened to him when he was sick with the COVID. He unfortunately was sick for many weeks in a coma. And then Baruch Shem, he came out of the coma and after many months of rehab, he came home. There's a famous picture of him getting out of the ambulance with a safer, being greeted by hundreds of people. Baruch Shem was an amazing thing. And he, it it made a big rush on him, but you know, he didn't waste it. He he had machshava. And he says when he got up from his coma and he looked around, he saw that all the medical personnel were wearing masks. And he says, at that moment I thought to myself, you know, it says in the Ikvas of Mashiach, there's going to be Hester Panim. We normally understand the Hester Panim, Ikvas of Mashiach, as the Rebun Shalom, Anoichi Hester Aster Panim. The Rebun Shalom will cover himself up from Klal Yisrael. But he said, maybe there's another aspect of the Hester Panim. Maybe we'll cover each, ourselves from each other, like we do with a mask. It's interesting. When a person smiles at another person, there's, there's two types of smiles. You know, the Yaakovina, when he gave the brach, he says, Chachlili shinai micholov. Your teeth will be white. Because when a person smiles, in a friendly smile, he opens his mouth. It's two types of smiles. It's like a tight smile, like this. And then there's a friendly smile, and he opens his teeth, and he shows it. And I was thinking, what's the pshat in that? The pshat is a friendly smile, takes the ponim, the face, and says, I'm inviting you pnim, I'm inviting you inside. I'm inviting you to be part of me, I'm inviting you to share with me, I'm inviting you to become one with me. It's a friendly smile. It's where we're together with each other. There's a tremendous power in that. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says in the Torah that HaKadosh Baruch Hu was with Maish Rabbeinu Ponim El Ponim. They were there in such a madrigal, they, they shared with each other, they were together with each other, were inside with each other. That's the Ponim El Ponim. It says by Rameir, Rameir spoke about his Rebbe, 
Rebbe, and he said, I only saw Miachurov from the back. Had I seen him in the front, I would have been even greater. Because seeing the Rebbe creates that kind of connection with the Rebbe that you cannot buy. It's something that makes you part and one with them. That's why it says in the puzzle, as Pnei Moracha. Your eyes should see the face of your Rebbe. In, in, actually, in, all the, in the Sephardi Sforim, it's very interesting. They have the Mechabra, the picture of the Mechabra. The famous, you know, the Ben Yishchai, you see in the front, the picture of the Ben Yishchai. The famous picture of him when he was 26 years old at the Chassan. And they show a picture of him, Mamish, blazing eyes, beard, Mamish, Hadis Panim, Shein Kamayu. But that's how you rech, is Pnei Racha, because then you bond. You, you're there together. And a mask covers that up. So we have the ikvas of the Mashiach, we come to this time in which we live, which is so close to the Mashiach coming, and maybe one of the Hester Punim that we have is the Hester Punim from each other. And we have to overcome that Hester Punim. And we have to overcome it by opening ourselves to each other, by taking off the masks, figuratively, as well as hopefully, as time goes on, literally. And we're able to see each other, we're able to smile at each other, and we're able to be together with each other, overcome the sinus chinam that caused the tragedy. It was the Churban Hamigdash that we see, that we had, that we commemorated, and we mourned for on Tisha B'av. And now we can go way past that, and we can go into the future. And that's the first Indian that he talks about in this Vort, in his Vartaira, about the mask that was uncovered. The mass that separates each, us from each other, and that's a mass we want to uncover in order that we can bond and be with each other. And be zoicha to the Mashiach. Mashiach's waiting. He's waiting to see how we behave with each other. If you remember last week's year, we talked about Hashem says, I'm not your father if he's not your brother. So we have to work on being each other's brothers. We have to work on being together with each other. We have to work on being panim el panim with each other. But that's something that we can do when we take off the mask and we open ourselves up to the other person. And then he says the second thing. It's amazing. We know that there was a tragedy. Chal Yisrael suffered three tragedies in, in, in a short amount of time, in the, a little bit, sort of the semi-post-COVID era that we're in, hopefully. And it's post-COVID. And, but he said that we had Meron, we had the stolen tragedy before Shavuos, and we had Surfside. And in, somebody said that this year, Lagbeimer wasn't Lagbeimer, Shavuos wasn't Shavuos, Halavai Tishabov won't be Tishabov. But unfortunately, it was. So he said, we took a look, and he said the Karlina Rebbe, after this tragedy, was very shook up by it, obviously. Three Hasidim. Three people with Nifter, I mean, terrible, terrible tragedy. And he went for Chizik to Ramesha Sternbuch. And Ramesha Sternbuch told him an amazing thing. He says, says by Rabbi Yechenen that the famous Amaira Rabbi Yechenen said that I don't want to be the Frikvus of Mashiach, I, I won't be able to handle it. And Pashup Shadz, we understand it to mean that it will be too emotional, he's afraid of all the physical destruction. But he said, no. Rabbi Yechen was, was, was a spiritual person. That wouldn't have bothered him. Rabbi Yechen lost Nebuchadnezzar, Rahman's son, all his children. And he used to carry the, a bone of his youngest child when he went to Menachem Oval. You see, to be Imachan Noichi, but sir, look what I, the loss I have. He said, You know what Rabbi Yechen was worried about? Rabbi Yechen was worried that people would see a tragedy and wouldn't see the Yad Hashem in it. They would see Ikvaz Mashiach and all the things happening. And he couldn't bear that they wouldn't realize it's from the Rebbe and the Shlail. He says, that's the biggest in Soyan, is that when things happen, we have to see it's from the Rebbe and the But during Yifun Shiach, HaKadosh Baruch wears a mask. Haster, Aster, Ponai, we don't see it. He says, that's going to be so painful, Rabbi Yechen couldn't handle it. He says, that's what it says by Elio Navi. Elio Navi said, Aneni Hashem Aneni. He said, answer me, Hashem, answer me. And the Chazal said, why do you say the second Aneni? Aneni Hashem is up. He says, Aneni, because when the Yeshua will come, people shouldn't say it was from Kishuf, that it wasn't from Hashem. That's the Yetzar, that it wasn't from Hashem. He says, Aneni Hashem, that people should realize it was from you, that when things come, 
That's why we say at the end of Yom Kippur, you know, we say Hashem, Melech Hashem, Melech Hashem, Yim Lechli Oilam Ver. We say, why? Because we want to be mechazik. We just went through a whole Yom Kippur. We have to keep being mechazik at every single time that we have notes from the Kodesh Baruch Hu because we so easily forget and we so easily don't see that it's from the Kodesh Baruch Hu when Saras happens. It says a story, or when the Yeshua happens. <laughs> when the Tsarist happens, we have in the Zion, and when the Yeshua happens, we have in the Zion. He tells a story uh, that at the time of the Chafetz Chaim, there's a famous Dibbuk of Radin. What was the Dibbuk of Radin? There was a young girl that suddenly a man started speaking out of her, male voice coming out of her, saying all sorts of blasphemy, all sorts of curses, chasrashom, terrible things. So the doctors didn't know, you know, this is above our pay grade, we don't know what this is, and they came to Chafetz Chaim. What to do? So Chavetz Chaim sent his Talmidim, Bereishim Rebbe Chanan Vassaman, and told him, what, here's what you should do to get rid of it. And amongst them was Rebbe Chatzko Levenstein, says was the youngest. And they, it's in the book about Rebbe Chatzko. And they went there, and they did what the Chavetz Chaim told them to do. And the Dibbuk flew out of her, and it crashed through the window, broke the window on its way out, which it seems in all these Dibbuk stories happens. And, that, and then she started talking normally. She's like a normal girl again. So it was the talk of the town, obviously. It, it was, people were, were like sugar from it. And they kept coming to see the broken window. So Rebchatzko, after it was a great Balmusser, said, says, all the shoemakers and all the tailors came to see it and were in the spoil. He says, but I saw as time went on, the shoemaker was a shoemaker and the tailor continued to be a tailor. You can see Nithlaeus, and for a second say it's Meis Hashem even, but then you forget. I know we said over many times, Rav Chaim Shem Levitz, a similar Yusoy, Ra Shivchal Yom Ashel Orach Yecheskel Babuzi Miyomav. The Shivchal Yom saw what Yecheskel Babuzi did not see at the Yom. Yecheskel Babuzi saw the, the Maris Alakim, the Meis Merkava, everything. Saw a third base of Migdash, saw everything. And the Shifcha was greater than him? So what happened? Where did the Shifcha go? Yechezka wrote, Say for Yechezka, where's the Shifcha? Says Rukhaim Shmulev, she's Geblimina Shifcha. She saw all of it, but she stayed a Shifcha. So there's something that we see the Maisa Lukim, and we don't always recognize it because of that Hester upon him that HaKadosh Baruch Hu put in the Bria. So the aside of Ikthas and Mashiach is for us to realize, to go through things and realize Meis HaShem Hayas That's our challenge, that's our test to see behind the mask, to realize the Rebbein Shalom. And that's we come back to Maishu Rabbeinu. Maishu Rabbeinu was rejected. Maishu Rabbeinu suffered a terrible loss. He was, in, he was like Golis, where we have all these things that happen to us in Golis. And we don't always recognize from the Yibayin Shalom, but Maishu Rabbeinu did recognize it was the Yibayin Shalom. And the Chara person can become angry. How can the Yibayin Shalom do this to me? I served faithfully for 40 years in the Midbar. I served faithfully, I brought the Yidin out. And could become angry with the Kaddish Baruch Rahman Rahman People, he brings a story of a man who went through the Holocaust that lost, the, that they, they killed a child in front of him. And he stayed it from Yid. How's that? So we learn from Maishu Rabbeinu. Because what is Rabbe, Maishu Rabbeinu after the first episode when he says he, chant, he, he did this? So you think, does Maishu Rabbeinu said, and I was upset and I was angry? No. Maishu Rabbeinu goes on, Vat Yisrael. Shema la chukim ha'ela, listen to all the chukim, this is what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants you from you, this is what you should do, and this is the Aserah Sadibras. Maishu Rabbeinu was mekabal b'sba'ava, the rejection the Kaddish Baruch Hu gave him. Because he said, Mesa Hashem ha'yisazais. So in a funny way, even when things are not good, even when things are schwer, even when we have difficulties and problems, when we know it's from the Rebbein Hashem, there's a Nechama, that the Rebbein Hashem knows what he's doing. If we deny that it's the Rebbein Hashem, or we don't recognize the Rebbein Hashem, and we don't go behind the mask, then we're left with kashas with no terutzim. We're left bereft, because it seems so mikra, it's just 
It's so unfair. Why is this happening? But we recognize from the Bani Shalom that we're able to have a whole different world. Now they say that the people who made it through the concentration camps the most intact emotionally and psychologically were the from Yidin. Because the from Yidin were able, I'll be rave, they were able to understand that there's a Kodesh Baruch We totally don't understand it, but there's a Kodesh Baruch behind it. That's in the Chama. So we come after the Chorban. And we have a Chorban and we mourn the Chorban. And the Chorban was very real. And when we mourn the Chorban, we mourn all the Chorbanas. When we mourn the Chorban, we mourn the Chorban of Spain. We mourn Tach Vitat. We mourn the Crusades. We mourn all the Nebuch, the Holocaust. We mourn everything. Because that's Tisha B'Av. But then we come the following week, and it takes us a week to come to it. Because it takes a week. And then we say, Nachamu, Nachamu Ami. Then we say, you know, Akash Baruch, you've comforted us. You know what the comfort is? Not necessarily because everything has become hunky dory and everything is beautiful and no problems. No. Nachamu, Nachamu Ami. Yarm Elokayach, because we know it comes from Hashem. That's the Nechama. If we can see behind the mask and we can see that it comes from Hashem, that is the grass in the Nechama. And that's the lesson Moshe Beno taught us. Moshe Beno had a bitter, bitter. <laughs> Rejection. But he, he's unbowed. We, he goes right on. It's, okay, next. He's able to. Why? Because he saw Shem Panam Panam. Because he saw behind the mask. And because of that, he was able to accept that everything from HaKadosh Baruch Hu is just and right and correct. And he may not understand it. But it's Mesa Shem Hayas And that's Nechama. So we go from Tisha B'Av the Nachamu, Nachamu Ami, the embrace of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and knowing that everything is for a reason, if we can only go beyond the mask and behind the mask. Have a good job,